In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to St Margaret's Church, Durham. I'm talking to you from the top of the church tower. The last time I was here was on Ascension Day, appropriately enough. And the reason I'm back here today is because the church keeps this Sunday, the last Sunday in ordinary time, as a feast of Christ the King. It is an echo, if you like, of Ascension Day, a day in which we remember the Lordship, the Kingship, the reign of Christ in all things. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. The kingdom is yours, but we turn away from your just rule. Lord, have mercy. The power is yours, but we trust in our own power and strength. Christ, have mercy. The glory is yours, but we fall short of the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King, keep the Church in the unity of the Spirit 
and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd and I the Lord will be their God and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Oh, mm -hmm. 
A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you, as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority, and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him. Then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, at the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you, prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick, or in prison, and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, 
and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The phrase Christ the King is a metaphor, a worldly term used to try to convey something of the heavenly glory of Christ. It implies not so much ruling as reigning, Christ embodying the heavenly perpetuity of God's law and order, an order which is loving and merciful and just. The phrase Christ the King could prompt all sorts of ideas about Jesus Christ, some perhaps helpful, some less so. But fortunately, the phrase has biblical provenance, and it is to the Bible that we must go to inform our understanding of the phrase. On this day, the Feast of Christ the King, three different Gospels are used across the three-year cycle of readings. Today we heard Matthew 25, Jesus enthroned and passing judgment. Last year we heard from Luke chapter 23, the King of the Jews, crowned with thorns, dispensing mercy and forgiveness from the cross. And next year it will be John from chapter 18. Pilate questioning Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus replying, For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Three years, three gospel readings, three interpretations of the phrase, Christ the King emphasising in turn judgment, mercy and truth. And there are, of course, overlaps between the three. Christ in judgment rewards those who have shown mercy. Christ shows mercy to the thief who tells the truth. Christ testifies to the truth before Pilate, placing the judge himself under judgment. Judgment, mercy and truth. All three remain crucial in the world today, not just for rulers of nations, but for all of us in the way we rule our own lives. The world this year is in crisis, thanks to the pandemic. But the word crisis literally means judgment. All through this crisis, sound judgment has been required. And the challenge has been the same as is required of us in this morning's gospel. To feed the hungry to befriend the stranger, to provide for the poor, to tend the sick, 
and to keep the isolated in touch. When it comes to the crunch, these are the things that matter. It is right to yearn for Christ's kingly reign. The world is full of would-be rulers, not all of whom respect the truth, not all of whom care for mercy, not all of whom are of sound judgment, and we are all the poorer for it. He is the ultimate exemplar for anyone who aspires to wield power. And that means not just them, but us as well. Because we all exercise power to some degree, whereby we in due course will be judged. Christ shows us what it is to be a king, whether over a nation or simply in our own lives. It is to dispense mercy, to testify to truth and to judge justly. Amen. I'm going to use the words of the Nicene Creed and as a visual reflection of those words of faith, uh, the windows in the nave, using a bit of film which uh, I filmed on Trinity Sunday earlier in the year. Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God, from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of intercession this morning 
have been written by Douglas Pocock, but he's not able to record them for us, so my daughters are going to read the prayers. Let us pray to the Father, through the Son, by the Holy Spirit. Father God, we echo Paul's words that the Church is Christ's body today, the completion of him who himself completes all things everywhere. As the completion of Christ on earth today, we ask that you will keep the Church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of love, so you may show loyalty to him and show love to our neighbours, not only with our lips, but in our lives and to recognise that we ourselves will be judged by such loyalty, for our response to human need, for such response is a response to Jesus himself. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Father God, at this time we pray for all those who devote themselves to the service of others in medical and caring professions, especially in the realm of COVID-19. Grant them patience and protection, and to those whom they serve, comfort. And for their colleagues researching vaccines, we ask for guidance and perseverance. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. With the words of today's lessons in mind, and recalling to mind the diocesan call to prayer at this present time of lockdown, we ask guidance for all in authority, in the health service, government, education and church. We pray that all will be granted wisdom, compassion and courage to live supportively of each other, knowing that Christ will not forsake us as we follow him. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those who are sick in body, mind or spirit. Comfort and help all who are in need of any kind. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We hold before God all those who have recently died, including Ava Dick. We pray for her family and her friends. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. To crown all things there must be love, to bind all together and complete the whole, let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us pray together with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. This window in the library corner was originally installed, I think in the 1840s, as the main east window of the church before being replaced some decades later by the current much larger window above the altar. The window shows Christ our Lord, crucified and raised, ascended and glorified. we hear the words of the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. And give us, we pray, such a sense of all your mercies that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful and that we show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service 
and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. And now before the final words of blessing and sending out, we hear the words of a prayer which has been repeated on this Sunday for very many years and centuries and which is a reminder to us to be ready for the things to come. Let us pray. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Usually, during the year, a flag flies from the top of the church tower here at St Margaret's. It's the flag of England, of course, national flag, which is appropriate to fly from the top of a Church of England church. But also, and more relevantly, it is in art and heraldry the flag or symbol of resurrection most often seen in the symbol of the Lamb and flag, symbolising the risen Christ. And so the flag flies not just at Easter and on great feast days, but we keep it flying through the year as a sign of the resurrection, the risen Christ whom we preach. I usually take the flag down for the penitential seasons of the church year, that is Advent and Lent, so that the contrast is more marked when it is flown again for Christmas and Easter. And after the words of blessing, I will take down the flag for Advent for this year. Christ our exalted King, pour upon you his abundant gifts and bring you to reign with him in glory and the blessing of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit be among you and remain with you always amen
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.